My name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Yeah. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel. We thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. We are your people that believe that the law, statutes, and commands are good for all times, that they are good for all civilizations, they are good for every family, they are good for men, women, children. It's good for everybody. And the law, statutes, and commands are found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And um, they will enhance your life, they will make your life worth living. All right, so today on our creator's calendar, it is month 10, brand new month here. It is the first day on the first day of the week. It is the 25th day on the Gregorian calendar, and that makes it a um, Christmas day, Saturnalia day. And so unfortunately, everybody has gotten on their knees to Nimrod's cut off piece of anatomy and they have allowed their children to get on their knees to a false deity. They probably put cookies and milk out for the false god that supposedly came through the chimney and gave them gifts. And it's actually a really somber day. It's really sad. It's Saturn, Saturnalia. And so my family, uh, not my family here, but all my other family, they all celebrate it. It's the most festive day of the year. And um, as they march them their own ways into hell and nobody cares. So... All right, let's continue on. Anyone want to take a guess, quick guess on what your count is? Uh, what were we yesterday? I'm going to guess like 480. 480? Uh, 500. Okay. Um, Just 500. 475. Okay, so this is the actual count right here. Uh, we have 427 of the main restored name scriptures. Um, within 41 of the others of the complete Hallelujah scriptures. Uh, what I found interesting was um, the Spanish scriptures is now the fifth place. 31 downloads. 31 downloads of this. So the total um, that I had, I did my little handy-dandy calculator, 498. 498 mm. downloads of the U.S. restored name scriptures so far in the month of December. And so that is um, good times. Okay. All right. Let us get into our day. And we are in the Letters of Wisdoms of Solomon. We're in the fifth chapter of this, and we are cruising our way through this on a very, very pagan day. Okay, here we go. Then the righteous shall stand in great boldness before the face of those who have afflicted him, and take no account of his works. When they see it, they shall be troubled with awesome fear and shall be amazed at the mystery of his salvation, so far beyond all that they look for. And they, repenting and groaning, groaning for anguish of spirit, shall say within themselves, This was he whom we once mocked, and a proverb of reproach. We fools accounted his kai madness, and his end to be without esteem. How is he numbered among the children of Elohim? And his lot is among the Kadeshim. Uh, trying to do all this here. Therefore, we have strayed from the way of truth, and the light of righteousness has not shined upon us, and the brilliance of righteousness did not rise upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. We have also gone through deserts where there is no path. But as for the way of Yahuwah, we have not known it. So we get into this thing where people, wicked people that have mocked Yahuwah, that have mocked the people of Yahuwah, people that follow the Torah, they realize that it's over for them. They've sinned. And this is this could be on Judgment Day. This could be towards, or they just somehow realize it. But this is something you don't want. You don't want to be that person if you're not in Torah, if you're just new listening to this and you're mocking those that are keeping the Torah, if you're mocking Yah's commands. You don't want to be that person on Judgment Day that goes, Wow, I was wrong. You don't want to be repeating exactly what this says because you will repeat this. You will you will say these things when you get on Judgment Day saying how wrong you were and how righteous Yah's laws really were. Yeah, I mean, many people will say on that day, Adonai, Adonai, and they, they will be told by our Messiah. And our Messiah, Yahushua, who is, you know, you guys know him as Jesus the Christ, but there were no J's in Hebrew. But he will tell people to, to get lost right get go depart and they're going to be very hard words and we can live this life now and we can get on our knees to nimrod and and celebrate all these evil things and we can 
we can do it and it's, it's not what it's not what we're celebrating it for we're celebrating it for the birth of our messiah well it is pagan and you're laughing at our creator when you do this kind of stuff you're you're doing what the devil wants you to do and it, it's you know at the end of times the only people that are going to be mocking our creator well, it's not going to happen, right? You're going to, you might mock him now, but you're not going to mock him later. When, when you have that realization that the Torah is the truth, that the scriptures are all true, and you led a very evil life, you have a very, very, very long time to figure this out. If you are really celebrating, you want to celebrate the birth of Yeshua, the Messiah, you should do it on the day that is more likely to be on there, which would be the Feast of Trumpets. You're not going to binge watch your Christmas specials. You're going to binge read his life story, right? How he was laid in the manger, how he was with the animals, how he was, how there was no space for him. So he was born in the back of a manger, right? How he was shown up to all these people that came to him and worshipped him and basically gave him gifts and they knew that they were the sun and that they knew that the the angels sung for glory right well, that's how you would celebrate his birth you would blow the shofars on the day because the shofars were as a signifying to oh, hold on Messiah. and so as we sing all these christmas carols as we do all this kind of stuff it, it's it's not what our creator would have us to do and so um i don't know where you're going with that whole thing Cade, but it's bad news at the end when you are not keeping the Torah. Yeah, I was just saying that if you're if it's really about the birth of the Messiah, you're not going to get on a tree. There were no trees mentioned, no trees decorated, nothing mentioned in the Bible that where Yeshua was born. He wasn't born under a tree. Why are you under a tree? You really need to look deep into these things. Why? Why are we? Why do you even have a tree in your house? What's the reason for it? Because nowhere in messiah's birth was there a tree with a star on top or an angel on top or whatever you put on top of it nothing was decorated there were no presents under the tree joseph didn't set any of that up mary didn't set any of that up. the people in the manger didn't set any of that up no and then you know it's like as as you spend your entire year's savings on all of these gifts to appease your wife and your husband and your kids and join in with this you're you're just wasting your cash you're wasting every bit of, of things that you have and Yom Teruah is when we are supposed to be blasting our, our trumpets. That is when our Messiah was born. That is hopefully when our Messiah will come and get us um, or somewhere close to that. And you only have one shot at this. We have one shot at this life and many, many, many are just are losing it. Okay. What has pride profited us or what good has wealth with our boasting brought us? All these have passed away like a shadow and as a rumor that hastened away. And as a ship that passes over the waves of the water, which when it has passed, the trace of it is unable to be found. Neither the pathway of the keel in the waves, or as when a bird has flown through the air. There is no sign of it, its way to be found. But the air being lightly beaten with the stroke of its wings and parted with the rapid noise and motion of them is passed through. And after passing, there is no sign of it to be found. And, you know, I, I looked up the other day and I, I heard that pounding of the wings. You can hear that, those birds, when they're up there, they're not very far away, but you can hear them literally like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. and um, I, I looked up the other day and I, I, I just thought how great our creator was that he's creating animals that are sitting there gliding up on the air that we can sit there and watch them. And they're just, you know, it's, it's, you know, the analogy here is that, you know, it's like a, a bird. You, you see it and it's gone. There's no path to it. There's no, there's no anything to it. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's the whole point of what we're talking about here. Let's continue on. Or as when an arrow is shot at its mark, at a mark, it parts the air, which immediately comes together again. So one cannot know where it went through. And, you know, that, that's, that's amazing as well, right? These are the things that we we're talking about, invisible things when we're parting the air and only our creators under able to understand this, that the air that we breathe is something around us that is, is physically able to be parted. You're able to get fans and, and it's just amazing our creation. So yeah. And, um, all this stuff, you, you can see it, but you don't know where it went. Okay. Even so we also, as soon as we were born, began to draw to our end and had no sign of a brightness to show but we're consumed in our own wickedness. For the expectancy of the unrighteous is like dust that is blown away with the wind, like a thin frost that is driven away with a storm. 
as the smoke which is dispersed here and there with the storm, and passes like the remembrance of a guest who stays but a day. But the righteous live forever. Even so, the reward is with Yahuwah. Okay, so what, what does it say right there? What was that last piece there? The, but the righteous live forever. So there's yet another promise. That's good news, right? Hmm. How do you become righteous? What is this? And Christians will go, oh, you're just pra you're, you're, you're legalistic. That's, you're just pra you just think you're righteous. And, and that's, that's what they've been trained to, to tell everybody. And when we say righteous, we are not saying that we are better than anyone else. I've said it before and I will say it again that we fail far more than probably everybody out there. If you're looking for the greatest sinner amongst us, I have 10 fingers pointing back to me when I point at one, right? It's, it's I am the biggest sinner amongst us all. So there is no righteousness to that point, but we can try to achieve righteousness by keeping the law, statutes, and commands and getting our life dialed in that we can walk this path. And, you know, like we had yesterday in, in our, in our uh, Shabbat um, reading, a, a lady came in and she says, this is hate, right? This teaches hate. And it's, the hate is, you know, when, when you, somebody rapes a, a woman, you, you kill that man, right? You take him outside and you, you kill him with rocks. Um, when you murder somebody, you take him outside and you kill them with rocks. If you have somebody that is preaching uh, sh doctrine that is not in the Torah and trying to lead people astray according to the will of our creator you pick up the rocks so there is a tremendous amount of times that we are told not as individuals but we are told as groups of people with witnesses right you're not just going to pick up the rocks and start chucking them at people there's a process and a procedure and you have to bring witnesses you have to bring them before the quorum you have to do this in a procedural way but it is not, it is not hate. We're, I'm not saying to go kill people. Uh, what I'm saying is our creator has said to put evil outside of our midst. And if that makes you think this is evil, I'm very, very sorry. But I would rather live in a world that does not have the perversion and the perverse people and the evil and the sin, not knowing what people are going to do because they're full of wickedness and vileness and they don't keep the Torah. So... Yes, there should be punishment for it in a, in a just world. Okay. Um, even so, their reward is with Yahuwah, and the Most High looks after them. Therefore, they shall receive an esteemed reign and a lovely crown from the hand of Yahuwah. Think he's get, do you think we get a real crown? Are we wearing a crown? I don't. I don't Does anybody want to wear a crown? I don't think that they got to be falling off the time losing I don't want it. Yeah, I don't want to wear a crown. I don't want any of that. It's just going to, it's, I can't even wear a hat right. It sometimes <laughs> falls off. A crown's going to flip over. I'll probably break Yah's tail or something. It'll fall off and break something. So I, I'd rather not have a crown. But I mean, do you guys think it's a real crown? Um, I mean, are we, I, are I we, think it's more like we have a glory on us. And yeah. So we're kind of crowning glory. Yeah, I would say that's probably right. For with his right hand, he shall cover them. And with his arm, he shall protect them. He shall take his ardor as complete armor and make creation his weapon for the vengeance of his enemies. What did you guys say in 17? He shall take ardor? He shall oh. make his jealousy. Okay. He shall make his jealousy for complete armor. Okay. He shall put on breast, put on a righteous, let me try that again. He shall put on righteousness as a breastplate and true judgment in a place of a helmet. What does that mean, put on righteousness as a breastplate? I mean, it's going to protect you, right? You're going to, in the spiritual battle, you're going to need more than just faith in Messiah Yeshua. You need righteousness as well. You need the Torah. And to protect yourself in the spiritual battle, you need both the pieces to work. Yeah, and so righteousness will create us a breastplate. It will create us the armor that is much needed. Okay, and true judgment in a place of a helmet. He shall take Kodesha for an invis invincible sword. Is it invincible? Invisible. Invincible. Mine's invin yeah, mine's invincible. Okay, he shall take Kadesha for an invincible shield. He shall sharpen his severe wrath as a sword, and the earth shall fight with him against the foolish. Then the thunderbolts aimed true shall go out, and from the clouds, as from a well-drawn bow, they shall fly to the mark. Okay, um, this talks about the elements of our environment, right? Anyone want to have thunderbolts aimed at you? 
Uh, no, it's really scary. If you've uh, never had a lightning storm or ever been near a close lightning, it is very scary. And having that used against you as a weapon is going to be even worse. That's going to be even scarier. Yeah, not even just the the, the thunder bolts, but the, the like the the lightning and the the you know the thunder itself. It's not even bolts, but it's the thunder and the the amount of electricity that flies through the air, and it's just it is the intensity. It's just really intense. And, you know, that's why, you know, these people that shun our creator and they're like, ah, God doesn't exist, blah, 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 blah. You know, who, who created it then, right? It didn't get created out of nothing. We have a book that told us where it came from. Why don't we believe this until we have a better understanding of what it is? I mean, if, if, if it's all a lie, well, then where did it come from? And I don't believe that it is all a lie because it makes tremendous amount of sense. And even if it was a lie... The way that we are supposed to live is is a good way. We're not supposed to thief from people. We're not supposed to take their stuff. We're not supposed to lie to them. We're not supposed to mess with them, right? We're not supposed to hurt people. We're supposed to take care of widows and orphans and things like that. And if you don't want to live like that, if you don't want the law, statutes, and commands of our creator, then I guess that is it. But then are you capable of hurting the widows? Are you capable of hurting the orphans because I, I know there's a tremendous amount of people that are totally fine with both of those okay 22 and hailstones filled with wrath shall be thrown as a stone out of a bow and the water of the sea shall rage against them and the floods shall cruelly drown them a mighty wind shall also stand up against them and blow them away like a storm so wickedness shall lay waste the whole earth and evil works shall overthrow the thrones of the mighty. Okay. Um, anything, guys? No, it just more promises that evil is going to be overthrown. And you don't want to be on that side of evil when judgment comes. What do we make of uh, the wisdom of Solomon so far? Is there anything? It's uh, like, kind of like Proverbs. A little bit like Proverbs. It's like Proverbs, but I think it's uh, more on our level, right? We can understand it easier. We know that evil is going to be dealt with. We know that what righteousness is explains what righteousness is. Yeah, it's not talking in like uh, Solomon's, um, you know, uh, I don't know what... He speaks like it's code. Quite, yeah, code, code talk in a lot of his stuff. A lot of his stuff doesn't talk. And so far, it's not talking like a king, right? A lot of the stuff in Proverbs, he talks at stuff that we wouldn't understand because we are not kings. Yeah, he was talking stuff where like for his actual children that were going to inherit the reign that they needed to do. Yeah. And so. this is for, I think, all the people. Yeah, and so this is definitely interesting. Anyone know why this is not in our scriptures? Where did the, why, why has this been pulled out of our something normal scriptures? Something more that the enemy did not want us to learn, something the enemy did not want us to have, and they yeah. just threw it out because, well, I guess 66 is the way to go. Yeah. Okay, all right, guys. Well, that's it. Thank you guys very much. Our family out there, we love you guys very much. We hope you have a wonderful day. We hope and pray that you are not celebrating this uh, pagan day and that you uh, are far, far away from any of this evil. So thank you guys very much. All right, Not so. so.